Sup folks, it's Ray Poopton III with another Zombies Chronicles video. Today I have my Nocturne Toten High Round Guide, complete with setup, multiple camping strategies, and all the best training spots on the map. And it wouldn't be truly complete without covering both solo and co-op. For World at War on Black Ops 1, your only setup will be deciding which guns to use. For Black Ops 1, I highly recommend getting the Thunder Gun, a wall gun from wherever you choose to train, and monkeys. Getting mule kick and a ray gun or other box gun of your choosing is optional. You could just opt to save the money. For World at War, there is no thunder gun or monkeys in the box. You're left to either use the wall gun or keep it in the box or a combo of both. I see a lot of people use the flamethrower in ultra high rounds since the ammo is infinite, but any way you spin it, rounds are going to take quite a while so you will need to get very good at training somewhere. For the Chronicles Remaster, you now have the use of Gobblegums and a Wonderfizz machine with 7 additional perks, as well as the on-map perk Mule Kick. This opens up a world of new possibilities for both camping and training. For weapons on Chronicles, I highly recommend having the Raygun Mark II and the Thunder Gun. Monkeys are vital if you want to be able to recover from a down, and the Annihilator can be a great way to save ammo during insta-kills and can one-shot zombies until about round 25. If you ran a pack-a-punch gobblegum like crate or wall power with bullet boost, you can drastically speed up the higher rounds by getting the wall gun in your preferred training area with your pap gum and then bullet boosting when it becomes ineffective. This can make your wall weapon kill indefinitely and since the only other option for that is the thunder gun which runs out of ammo fairly quickly, this is a huge strength. The best options to get are blast furnace, dead wire, and turned. Fireworks is only as effective as your gun's bullets, and Thunderwall just won't take out as many as quickly. For Gobblegums, I recommend anything that gives you extra perks for easier and longer camping. I would also highly recommend a Pack-a-Punch Gobblegum such as Crate Power combined with Bullet Boost to speed up training through the higher rounds. Alchemical Antithesis is amazing as always for getting the most out of your Wonder Weapons and defensive gums for emergencies like anywhere but here and in plain sight can fill in the rest. Stock option and armamental accomplishment can be awesome for camping as well. In World at War you don't have access to any perks. On Black Ops 1 you can get Mule Kick but on Black Ops 3 you have your choice of 8 perks. There are two staples that I recommend having for both camping and training, Jug and Widow's Wine. They can both save your life a lot. Quick Revive can be bought more than three times on this map using the Wonder Fizz machine, so if you're playing solo, be sure to run that. For extra perks when camping, I recommend Speed Cola, Mule Kick, and Double Tap. Deadshot can help as well when used correctly. For training, I highly recommend Stamina. It will make your life way easier when doing loops. Now I will go over all the various strategies I have found effective. I will list these from easiest to hardest. This is by far the easiest and fastest strategy for all versions. Just keep the help door closed and do your rounds right there where you spawn in. This is what I like to call a one window camping strategy. You just have the one window to your right here and everything else will come at you from 12 o'clock straight ahead leaving your six behind you protected. In solo, just keep an eye and ear out for breachers and dispatch them with haste. In co-op, just switch off each round, watching the window and keeping it boarded and zom free and you can effectively camp here for the better part of the early rounds. When camping becomes too hairy, you can train here indefinitely in all three versions of the map. The columns in the area are incredible for spreading them out and allowing you the space to round them up. Take advantage of your full area, always taking a gap when you see it. You can come up past the stairs and double back or even use the file cabinet as a wider loop option. Just be careful of the zombies switching directions here as they are prone to doing. When using a bullet weapon such as the Mark II for headshots, there is a great way to line them up. This is also a great alternate route when there is no gap to close your loop. 
When coming back up the right side, keep going past the stairs. Take it as slow as possible, turning around in this left hand corner and then double back as quickly as possible. It is easy to get trapped right here by the tail end of your horde, so pull out a panic gun like the thunder gun if it seems like you may get cut off. Then you can come back and line them up either on the far right or in the dead middle and pop their heads or kill them with a thunder gun or a double papped wall gun. For co-op, it is possible to have two people run this loop simultaneously, but coordination can be hard, so if it is just two of you, I recommend the stronger player run at the next spot I will cover. If you leave the help door closed, you can also run in the room with the box. Be warned, it is nowhere near as easy as the spawn loop and camping strat, but it's the next best thing. You can camp by the radio here for a bit, a lot shorter over time than the spawn, but it helps that there are no windows to worry about behind you, and when you get overrun, you can just begin the loop. This is a great way to hit the box during the rounds, but requires you have speed cola. Double tap, dead shot, and widow's wine will help a lot camping here as well. The loop is a bit tricky. Just like the spawn loop, you must use your instinct. Take the path of least resistance between the two lanes, and then double back on the other side. Use the camping spot under the stairs to take them out. If you're playing co-op, it would be nice to let the person training this area get the thunder gun if you are not playing World at War. It is very easy to get trapped in here. This spot is a classic, the first ever camping spot for me. It is another one window camping strat and in co-op this window can easily be watched as not very many come through this window compared to the others. Switch off covering the window as to not have lopsided points and stats if guns allow it. On the remaster using gobble gums and both wonder weapons you can camp this classic spot until round 40 or so before having to run a loop. That makes this the best camping spot on the map but also requires you open up the help door ruining spots 1 and 2. Widow's Wine is a beast here and can make it dirt simple to camp here for a while with just the Thunder Gun and Mark II. Use Alchemical Antithesis to stretch your ammo as far as it will go. If you're just playing a casual game with buddies, this can be a very enjoyable strategy for the early rounds. It is possible to run a loop here, but is the most awkward and difficult of the three training areas I have gone over so far. Definitely have the Thunder Gun for this spot. If all doors are open because we all know that guy in pub matches, you can effectively camp here by the sniper cabinet at yet another one window camping spot. Trade off watching the windows and you can camp here until round 20 to 30 fairly easily. Watch for zombies sneaking around on the far left. If you stand here on the opposite side of the broken wall, they will not use that lane when spawning through that left side window. The last training strategy I want to go over is the big loop. If you've watched my Zombies 101 training guide, you know that that is just a big circle around a large area encompassing more than one room. This is used a lot when randoms don't know any better and open up the whole map, or on the original versions where it's just two hits and you're down. I like to let them spawn in while looping in the spawn area, avoiding going back behind the downed file cabinet. If they come in from the help room and you are coming from back there, it can be very bad. You can go either way, but I prefer the counterclockwise loop, running into the help room and then arcing out into the room before going up the stairs. This will bring you on a direct path with the KN wall by at the top of the stairs, so if you want, you can bullet boost that bad boy, which can take off heads into the 40s and 50s when just single path. With dead wire or a blast furnace, it can speed up the high rounds a lot. Run with your thunder gun out if possible, this is not an easy map to train. The doorways are narrow, as are a lot of the rooms. Use the open spaces to your advantage and let them bunch up there. Then use your choke points to take them out. But that about wraps up this video. I hope it helps you destroy your leaderboards. Thanks for watching. Subs and likes are appreciated. Peace!